Are you ready to see how Ligari products can transform your space? But first, let's check out the before footage. Here it is guys, we coated the floors and the countertops. This video is gonna show you the step-by-step -step process, how to recreate this look in your space using a DIY Ligari countertop kit. All right guys, it's primer time, and I'll just go through re a quick recap of what we've done to this point. So, the first thing was done, edges were square. They took a router to them. You never wanna go over a square edge. Always make sure your edges are rounded. Um, the next thing, we made sure the counters were level. These had to be braced up and tilted up because this was flowing off the counter. So you gotta make sure your countertops are level or the resin's gonna flow to the lowest point, obviously. Um, second thing, plastic everything off, floors, spots where the stuff's gonna drip and hit the cabinets. And then we also, since we have an uh, overhanging bar edge here, we had to create a dam. We just used cardboard, tape that up, so that's gonna catch any drips from falling onto the lower cabinet. And then the last thing we did was we did latex caulking, paintable caulking on all the back seams because there's a gap there, and if we didn't fill that, it'd wind up running down all the cabinets under there because it is finished under there. So primer time, it's already mixed up. We're gonna use a roller tray, a 3 8 snap roller. We've already de-shedded it. Got all the loose hairs off. First thing I'm gonna do since we're doing a dirty pour and we're gonna tape on our edges, I'm gonna go around and hit all the edges first so they can start to dry. So we'll soak this roller up. And I don't wanna just start on the edge. I'm gonna get some off the roller and then we'll start on the edge here. Now keep in mind, if you're going over white on like a dark black counter, you might need to hit your edges twice because you really want to get those a solid color, whatever primer you're using. This is covering really well, so we probably won't hit this twice, but if this was black, we'd want to let this set up for a minute and hit these edges again.
All right, so the edges are done. Now I just want to be careful that I'm not going to get it on my pants. But first thing we're going to do is paint in this back edge where the where we did the caulking at. All right, now we'll roll out the top. And then we'll just continue that process till we're done coating all the counters with the primer. All right guys, so what I'm doing now is just quickly hitting the edges. I'm not getting a lot on the roller and you'll kind of see, I'll start maybe right here. So you can kind of still see through a little bit. We want to get this nice and white. So one more quick coat. That's it, so we'll let this set up for about 45 minutes to an hour and a half and we'll do our tape edge. Okay, so the next step is to tape our edges to create a dam so the resin doesn't flow over until we pull that tape. Because you want to keep the same design on the top. Um, and if we don't use tape, it's going to flow over the edge and pull the design away. It's not going to look as cool as it does right when you pour it. So the way we do that is we're just using some, some painter's tape. And it's been about an hour since we primed. So it's tacky, but it's not pulling off or anything perfect time to do your tape edge. We want to make sure we're high enough above the counter so the resin doesn't get to the top and push the tape over. So we'll do that to all the edges um, and then we'll do another bead. So we have two, two strips of tape on all of them and then we want to make sure we go around and really push this down good because we don't want it to separate. We want it to get a nice good bond that way the resin doesn't flow under the tape. So now I'll go around and put the second strip of tape on everything, try to keep it the same height.
Okay, so the majority of these are gonna be fine as long as you tape high. If you tape it really low, the resin can get to the top of that tape and push it over. But we're so high, I'm not worried about any of these kind of falling over. The only one I'm worried about is this inside edge, how it, the tape already tilts in. So we're gonna wanna brace that and maybe even right here also. So I'm just gonna take a paint stick, broke it in half. We'll do one right there. And this is just gonna add rigidity to that tape edge. So those are basically the areas we see that the resin might push out. Um, while we're coating it and watching it, if we notice any other spots, we can always put a paint stick or something more uh, rigid and tape it up to that edge to keep the tape from falling over. We're getting ready to pour the dirty pour counter. So what you wanna do is separate all the materials for this countertop. So we have three quarts of clear metallic epoxy right here. That will go to roughly 50 grams of silver metallics. And then we have a gallon and a half of pigmented white epoxy and another three quarts of pigmented white epoxy. So we're just going to treat this as one kit. So we'll need, we'll need a five quart container to mix this in later. And the first thing we want to do is we always lay out a base coat on the countertops. So I'm just going to take 64 ounces from this gallon and a half and mix it up so that we can just lay out uh, just a thin base coat on the entire counter. Tyler's going to lay out the base coat. Well, I'm going to continue to get the rest of the batches ready. What he's going to do is basically use a foam roller to move it around, but he also has a squeegee just in case he needs to move it around quickly because sometimes it's really hard to move a tiny pile of epoxy all the way from this side of the counter to the other side of the counter. That's what the squeegee's for. And remember, the point of this part is we just want a thin coat of epoxy all over the countertops. It helps when we do the, the dirty pour for the rest of the colors to spread out as we pour them. We're gonna pour about five batches, but the batches spread out quickly and they level out faster if we have this thin coat of epoxy all over the surface. It doesn't take much either. Notice how on all the counter surfaces, notice how even this bead is that he poured out. That's what you're looking for. You don't want to pour too much up here, too much down there. It's a pain in the butt if you have to transfer from one countertop to another countertop. So he's just trying to pour it evenly everywhere. Use like a chip brush or something if you need to get it into the corners and paint the edges or maybe get around back behind the holes in the desk. Sometimes you can use a chip brush for that if you need to. Notice that Tyler moved the bead out and he's just cross rolling right now and he's moving a lot of that bead towards the edges. And so again, it makes it simple if you just dip your chip brush in the thicker stuff and just paint that back edge and then it'll help it level out. And there's even like some places back here where it's, it's not quite hitting the tape yet so we wanna just fill those in. So notice on this edge, he's not quite getting it down onto this edge. So I'm just gonna paint this edge just a little bit so we can get a little bit deeper. It doesn't have to be a lot of epoxy. We're just trying to coat it a little bit. 
Any types of hair or some of the hairs come out of the brush, we'll pick those up in just a little bit as well. So we have a thin coat of epoxy on everything. And notice it's really thin. It's even a little bit thinner up here than it is down here. That's okay. Everything's coated. That's the most important part. What we're going to do now, this is the, this is the easiest way to explain this. We're gonna mix all of the white together and then we're going to mix all of the, all of the clear epoxy with the silver metallics. So we have, we're gonna have one batch here and one batch here. We're gonna take these two buckets and then we're going to make five dirty pour batches. So that's how we're going to do that. So it's a lot easier if you actually have a second drill with a second paddle mixer on it. We just have one, usually we have multiple, but we're gonna pour all of this epoxy into this bucket now. And mix it all together as one big batch. I'm just tilting these up for a second because sometimes a lot of the epoxy will get caught in these handles. So you just tilt them up for like five to 10 seconds and then tilt it back down. We're gonna do the same thing with the clear. All right, now what we wanna do is get our silver metallics. We're gonna pour the metallic powder into the clear resin. And what we're going to do is we're just gonna turn, we're just gonna turn the vacuum on for a second, just so we don't get a bunch of metallic in the air. You don't wanna be breathing a bunch of metallics. So the vacuum will just suck that up really quick. You only need to have the vacuum on when you pour the powder in and when you're mixing it. Okay, now we have all of our part A, pigmented part A in this bucket. We have our metallic epoxy with our silver part A in this bucket. These are the accompanying part Bs for these batches. Now, all we need to do is pour our part Bs in, mix them together and make our batches. So that's what we're going to do.
Okay, the way that we're gonna pour these five batches, it's gonna be pretty random. So here are my five containers, and I wanna roughly make about 64 ounces in each container. So I'm gonna start by pouring white in each one, just a little bit of white. It's gonna be a little bit messy as we transition from container to container, but we'll wipe them. And they don't all have to match. That's the beauty of these dirty pours. They can be completely random. That's where you can really get artistic. We're gonna take some silver, pour a little bit of silver in each one. And that's what we're gonna do with our batch, just back and forth between white and silver. It's gonna start kind of dispersing that in the buckets, blending it a little bit in some parts and not blending it in others. This is how we get these really cool dirty pour effects. All right, now we'll leave a little bit of silver in here. We may want to play with that silver a little bit later, but I want to wipe the edges of these, and then I'll basically hand them to Tyler, but this is how you make the Dirty Pour batches. All right, so before I start doing the dirty pour, I'm just gonna run a paint stick and kind of map out a design that I wanna follow. You don't have to do this, but this will kind of help, help you pour these out. So I wanna continue the design from the top down to the bottom. So I'm gonna do a pattern up here and kind of angle this. It's gonna need to be like that, something like this. The more random angles you do, the, the cooler effects you're gonna get. Okay, perfect. So that's, that gives me something to start with. Now, since I have the, the majority of this bucket's full, I'm gonna start down there instead of trying to pour a small amount up here. So I'm gonna start down there and work to the top. So I just wanna make sure that I don't wind up pouring so much up top here that it gets really, really thick. So I wanna really watch how much because we have a small area to cover versus down here it's a lot bigger. All right, so I have a little left in here. I'm just gonna save that for later if we wanna add some really small veins. And we'll grab another bucket. And now that our pattern's kind of laid out, I can do, I can flatten this off a little and do some fatter, some kind of fatter veins on it. And I'm gonna start, actually start on the other end. I started here, I got a lot of silver. And if you notice at the end where the white was poured in first, we have a lot of white. So I wanna start over here, get some more silver on this end.
So now we got silver on that corner, silver here. I'm gonna do some on this top here to get some more silver out. And again, I wanna be make sure I don't pour too much out here. All right, so I'm just looking at the top. We got silver kind of, I'm kind of missing some silver here. So maybe I'm gonna pour, I'll pour one of these silvers right through here. And we'll go, and then we'll go right here. Doesn't have to be a big one because it is a lot of silver. And notice how I'm going, I'm not pouring on the same bead. We wanna go where it's low. You can kind of tell where it's thick here, thick here. These are the spots I'm trying to fill in now that I'm, I have about one and a half uh, buckets left. I wanna be more precise with how I, how I lay these out. So I wanna just go around and start filling in any of these low spots. You can tell thick, thick, really thin through here. And it doesn't take much. So I'm just hitting those thin spots. And you never want to pour a bunch of product like right on the tape edge. So notice I'm trying to keep it back. Got a little close there, but we, we have some supported tape there with the, the paint sticks. All right, so I'm on my last bucket. Now I really want to make sure I go around and get any spots that didn't get hit. Again, this is these beads are really thick. They're going to level out. They're going to flow. They'll wind up filling up the counter, but I don't want to pour so much like if I left this spot here with nothing back there it might not flow into there and level it all out so that's what I'm looking for any spots that don't have a dirty pour bead or look like it's thin like right here we got a low spot a big thick spot so I'm going to go around and just hit those spots All right guys, so all I'm doing is pushing some of these up to the edge, because it's almost impossible to get our vein to go right to the edge. So I wanna just kinda do it randomly all through the counter. So if you just hit one spot and do it, it might look different than the rest. But if we kinda go through and just kinda blend these up there, 
like right here, this just doesn't look natural. So I'm just gonna kind of blend that up there. Kind of run a finger through it, kind of blend that down. So any spots where there's like a half circle, the, these aren't, I'm not as worried about because once we pull the tape, it's gonna wanna flow. But we'll hit a couple of these. We'll spray some isopropyl on it. So it's always good to test spray it. Make sure it's, we want kind of a fine, just some small, small drips going on the counter. And we'll just go around and hit the whole surface. So you guys can see when we first spray it, it doesn't look like it does anything, but if you come back here, all these cells are where the, the pigments have thinned out because they've been blended together a little. Um, and a lot of these are gonna wind up staying because the pigments are thinned out. Um, and we're using a, a white and a metallic silver on it. So I'll go ahead and do the top. And again, I'm barely pulling the trigger. I don't wanna miss it. I just want some small drips out there. Okay, so after, after we spray the isopropyl, I wanna come back and add some, some dominant veins of just maybe solid silver, solid white. And we can also use some of the residue left in the, the containers. Um, when you have small amounts, you can get really fine beads of resin and you can really follow like these fracture veins. Like these all look like fracture veins in real stone. I can highlight these with the solid color or even another dirty pour with a small amount that was left. So I'll just go ahead and start with some silver. So what I'll do is I'll try to highlight this edge and pour just a really thin bead of just straight silver out here. All right guys, so I'm gonna go through and just use the remainder of these buckets. And again, I can be more precise now that I don't have a lot of product in here. All right, so I'm, we're basically done with the, the design. We're happy, we blended everything in. We fit it with isopropyl, isopropyl alcohol to create those cells. Um, so what we wanna do is wait about a half an hour to 40 minutes. Um, and we're gonna periodically check the, the, how thick this is getting by just taking some. And if we pull it back, you see how it's really flowing over? 
it's really fluid right here. So this is too early. So we want that to get a little bit sticky that when we pull the tape, it doesn't all run off and pull the design off the face, uh, off the top onto the floor. So we want to try to keep this design without moving. So that's the point of the tape. And then when we pull it, when it's sticky, it doesn't want to flow off as easy. And it keeps that top looking just like this. Okay, it's been about 50 minutes since we finished the countertop. Um, you you want to really check it because it, it might, depending on the temperature in your room, you might need to pull it a little earlier, but this is what we're looking for. We bend that tape down. You can tell it's slowly starting to move, right? That, that means it, the top's not really going to change. This is just going to start to flow over the edge. We'll brush it in a little, um, and then we'll keep that same design on the top without ruining it. So we're just going to start pulling the tape everywhere. You guys can see it's starting to flow slowly, but it'll, it'll cover that edge. You just want to make sure you don't wait too long to where the resin starts to set up too much and doesn't want to move at all. And you'll have some, we'll have some spots we'll have to hit with the brush because there is going to be thinner and thicker spots. So after we pulled the tape, what we're going to do is take a, the same paintbrush we used on the, the, the flood coat basically. Um, if it's really sticky, you can use a new one. Just make sure you have some product on there before you start. And we have, what happens is we get surface tension, so it just runs down in random beads. So we want to coat this whole edge. And once you get the edge coated, if you come over here, I've already brushed this. It'll all start to flow over evenly and take a little bit of that top design right down to the edge. So a lot of these veins will come down the face and it'll, it'll look really cool. So real simple, just real quick. And don't worry about messing up the design because it's still going to flow over. We just want to make sure everything is coated on this front edge. And we don't want to hit the top. We just want to work on the face. And if you need product, Let's say you don't have enough phone over something you can you can usually dip out of these buckets right because it's thin in there so there's not it's not heating up on us and you can bring up on your edge if you have to but we have we have plenty of product here to coat the edge so we don't really have to do that
you can see all the color coming off the face. This is just white when we did it earlier. Now we have the veins coming down, the edges are starting to look really, really good. So the last thing we'll have to do, and you're gonna, you'll probably have to do this over the next hour and a half, two hours at most, is periodically uh, just come through, scrape the bottom drips off. And this will start to set up enough where it, it quits dripping and then you won't have to scrape it anymore. But you wanna really stick around Make sure your edges are good. You don't have any runs. You don't have any missed spots. All right, so that's it. Again, we're gonna hang out, make sure the edges are all good, and then someone's gonna stay here and periodically scrape those drips for the next hour, hour and a half, or until it starts to set up to where it stops dripping. That way we don't have to come and sand off any drips on the bottom. All right, so we're getting ready to put the top coat on. Um, we coated these counters two days ago. They had to get some painters in here. So these counters have been sitting longer than 24 hours, so we have to scuff them up. Um, we're gonna be using 320 grit because we're doing the urethanes. If you're doing epoxy, um, anything like that, you can use a little heavier grit. It'll get rid of all the scratches. But our urethane, you wanna make sure you're doing 320 grit, 220 grit, something really fine that's not gonna scuff it up a lot and, and do big scratches in it. So we're gonna, Palm sander, 320 grit, vacuum. We're just gonna hit the whole counter. And then if you come over here, sometimes your edges, it'll beat up on the bottom edge. Like it basically creates a barrier and it just kind of builds up there. So to eliminate that, before you guys do your epoxy, we sanded from here to here this bottom edge just kind of rounded it a little bit as we were prepping the counter and you can see it didn't build up at all there. We have some drips and stuff we got to scrape, but that's, or sand, but that's not a big deal. We didn't get a build up of product on the, on the bottom. So we sanded from right here to here, rounded the bottom edge and that let the resin flow over nice and didn't build up. And over here it kind of, you can really see it over on this, this corner, like really, really thick here. So we're going to be, real careful sanding this. Whenever you're sanding your edges or corners, I'll do these corners by hand because we never wanna uh, palm sand the top edges. I'm gonna hit this really light, move slowly, right? Keep moving, looking at it, making sure I'm not sanding through. And I'll kind of show you the process. All right, so like I said before, we want to hit these top corners by hand. And it doesn't take much to just kind of scuff up that surface. So that's pretty much it. So I got this section done. Obviously not this, this face, but running my hand on the bottom, I don't feel any, any drips or bumps under there, so that's good. The face looks good. We don't have any lips on the bottom edge now and I'll continue this process, getting rid of all this stuff, scuff the whole counter, and then we'll apply our matte urethane. All right, so one last thing. Um, when you're sanding these bottom drip edges, you can use a heavier grit because you're never gonna see those, especially if you have a lot of thick drips. Do like 120 grit, even 80 grit, but I would always sand your lip down first if you guys get a lip on the bottom edge, and then do your drip. So always do the lip, and then you can switch out a little heavier grit, send that bottom edge.
Okay, sanding's done, so now we're gonna clean the counter. I'm gonna just do a dry wipe with the rag to get the majority of the dust off. Make sure you're getting that, that bottom edge underneath. It always collects a lot of, a lot of dust. We're gonna use just clear denatured alcohol. Just gonna wipe the counter. Again, make sure you get your edges good. So when you're done cleaning, you wanna be able to wipe your hand on it. Not pull up any dust on your hands or you don't wanna feel any debris on the counter. So once you can run your hand on it, not wipe up any dust, you don't feel any chunks or debris, it's basically ready to top coat. You can see if I wipe out here, really dusty. If I go where I clean, clean. That's what we're looking for. And then what Tim's doing, the, the cool thing about our top coats is they don't drip off the counter. So we can literally pull all the plastic everything and all we got to do is run one strip of tape anywhere we might touch a wall or a finished piece and then we can pull that right when we leave and we don't have to come back to the job to pull plastic or anything so that's what we're going to do and we'll show you how to tape you know just the spots that you might touch with the the roller and the top coat all right so one of the biggest things you want to do when you're taping is make sure you tape high. If we were to tape right to the bottom of the counter, this epoxy would have locked the tape in, and when we go to pull it off, it would just start tearing. We'd have to cut it out. So we always tape high, so when you pull it, it's real easy. You get a nice, straight, clean edge. You don't have to cut it out. All right, so we got all the old tape peeled. So now all I'm gonna do is go around and retape one strip of blue tape anywhere my roller might touch a finished wall or the paint. And then we'll be able to pull this right when we're done. And you always want to go back and really push down that bottom seal of the tape so we don't get any bleed marks. So we'll finish this up. We'll get all the plastic pulled, everything cleaned up. That way when we're done top coating, we can just head out. All right, we're finally ready for the top coat. We're gonna be doing our matte urethane. We also have gloss options. So if you guys want that gloss uh, finish, um, we have those as well. So cleaned, we, we did our tape, we have everything cleaned up. So I'm gonna be using a roller tray and just a six inch roller, three eighths nap. We've wrapped taped on it, we've de-shedded it, pulled all the loose fibers off because we don't wanna get that in our top. Tim's already mixed up my product. Now when you're first starting, you want to take a second, get your roller kind of soaked up. Kind of just push that urethane into that roller a little bit. Now we're going to be doing uh, two coats of this mat. Because when you're going over a glossy surface, sometimes you'll see little spots of gloss still through the mat with one coat. So we will be doing two coats, but the cool thing about the Top coats is we can recode it within about a half an hour. So we don't have to wait till the next day or till it gets hard. All 
All right, so what I like to do when I'm doing the top coat, get some product on there, roll a bead down the middle, about one foot, two foot, and then we just cross roll it. So I'm just moving quick while I'm spreading it out. Make sure we hit our faces, our corners. Now I don't want to start back rolling when I got a crease in my roller from hitting that corner. So I want to flatten that off. And then I want to find out where I stopped and make sure I'm overlapping from the last section. Now I'm just back rolling it. I'm not applying any pressure. Just kind of letting the roller glide on there. And then before I move on, I want to look at different angles. Make sure I don't have any roller lines, thick spots, missed spots, anything like that. Because you don't want to go down the counter and then come back and then try to hit a spot. It's going to look different if you do that. Really, really simple, guys. So I'll just continue this until the counters are done. Um, and then we'll show you. We'll wait about a half an hour and then we'll do that second coat. Okay, so we're ready for the second coat. I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera, but it does. it's not like wet looking. And if I touch it, it's not really sticky. It's, it's kind of tacky, but not sticky sticky. So this is a perfect time to do your second coat. Again, you don't have to do a second coat. We're just doing this to show you guys uh, the process. So again, first coat goes down, wait about a half an hour until it gets that kind of dull look to it. And then you can apply your second coat. And you have enough urethane to be able to do that. We'll still have some urethane left, even after doing two coats. And we're just gonna apply it the same exact way. And it will go a little bit farther, um, especially if you sand your first layer when you do your second coat. All right, so we finished up the second uh, coat um, and we have about eight ounces left. So you guys will have plenty to do two coats if you want. So last thing we're gonna do um, is pull this tape, clean up, and then we're done. So we can head out. We don't have to come back to pull tape or anything like that. We'll come back and get after shots when all the construction's done here. All right, so Tim's gonna pull the tape. He's gonna pull up away from the counter and you wanna make sure the tape isn't gonna tear and fall in the top coat. So go slow and that's, that's why we do one strip on a lot of the spots. If you guys enjoyed this video and you're looking to transform your existing countertops, go to Ligari.com and order your kit today.